So let's pick up where we left off last time. Last time we left off on the formula for flux. Actually, let me write it over here. This is the mathematical definition of flux. Actually, this is the way you can compute it. The nice definition is actually here, uh, where you translate integrating over a surface to integrating over a parameter domain. So let's go ahead. Let's employ this formula to, to solve this question. So let me actually erase everything here and we will get started. So, it's, uh, okay. So, we want to find the flux of, of, uh, of this vector field over this surface. So the first thing you want to do is uh, parameterize your surface, right? So we've, din we've done this a couple of times. We've taken a, a unit sphere, and you know it's a unit sphere because it literally says the radius is one. And we want to take this sphere and we want to parameterize it. How do you parameterize a sphere? Um, there's, a, there, there's a couple of ways you can do it, but I think the most natural way is to use spherical coordinates. So if you don't remember how to do this, I'm going to do it fast. If you, don't, if you want me to go through it slowly, uh, you can put me in slow motion by hitting the settings button. Or you can hit, uh, watch the, the ninth lecture where we discussed spherical coordinates. So let's say I have some point P, and I want to describe this point P not in terms of Cartesian coordinates, but in terms of spherical coordinates. I don't know if that's how you write it, but let's say that that's how you write it. So here's my x, here's my y, here's my z. I want to know how to re-express them in terms of spherical coordinates. So how are we going to do that? So we, we, uh, we drop down a perpendicular from P, and we connect this uh, wherever this hits the xy plane to the origin and then we call this angle between the x-axis and this uh, this vector we call that theta and we call the angle between the z-axis and and let's call this rho which is the distance between the origin and point p we call this phi or phi and so you get that since this is phi this is also phi this is phi sine, sorry, rho sine phi. Uh, and so since this is rho sine phi, project this onto the x-axis. So this just becomes rho sine phi cosine theta. And likewise, project it onto the y-axis. This becomes rho sine phi sine theta. So now, don't forget also to parameterize z, which is this one. And this is simply, simply rho cosine phi. Okay, if you're wondering why that is, this is rho, this is phi, hence this is rho cosine phi. So our parameterization of the unit sphere. Now remember, for a unit sphere, rho is going to be one, right? The radius is just one. So that's what I'm. I'm just going to ignore all the rows, just replace them with ones. And so we're going to have the following parameterization for our unit sphere. For x, we have sine sine phi cosine theta sine for y we have the same thing except you have sine of theta right almost like polar coordinates but in 3d and for um, for your z coordinate you have cosine of phi right, cosine of phi so here's your parameterization so this is this parameterization we're gonna uh, really hold closely uh, because in the in the next lecture we're going to differentiate this uh, we're going to find the partial derivative of r with respect to phi and then with respect to theta take the cross product uh, after we take the cross product we're going to take the dot product after we take the dot product we're going to take the double integral after we take the double integral we're going to find the total flux over the over the surface f so thanks for watching this episode i'll check you out in the next one